Story time about how my mother-in-law accused me of cheating on her son. My evil mother-in-law is the worst of the worst. And the moment I started dating her perfect little son, she would make judgmental comments on my body. And if I was ever in the kitchen cooking, she would be there to try to criticize everything that I would do. When my husband and I finally got pregnant, she pretended to be happy. I could see deep down inside she was hating the fact that I was pregnant. I think she always had the hope that he would leave me. But let me give you some background info on my husband. This man is lucky to be with me. Not only am I a 12, I am so kind and caring to him, and I have way too much patience for him. Whereas my mother-in-law thinks that he's the one lucky to be with me. First off, I make way more money than my husband, so I'm the one paying for most of the bills. But guess what? My husband asked me not to tell his mom about that because he'd be embarrassed. He also doesn't know how to cook or clean. And guess why? Because his mother did everything for him growing up. So I'm the one that has to cook, clean, and pay for the bills. A few months ago, I asked my husband for a divorce. He ran over to his mom's house and tried to get her to convince me not to. But guess what? His mom called me and told me that she'd convince him to give me a divorce. So instead of her trying to convince me not to leave him, she told me that she would convince my husband to break up with me. This was all for my benefit because I was the one that wanted a divorce. But two weeks later, I find out I'm pregnant. At the time, we were still living in the same house, but we weren't really talking. So I finally went up to him and told him that I was pregnant. He was so happy. You think he even gave me a hug or a kiss? No, he picked up the phone and called his mother right away. He called her on speaker and I could hear what she was saying. And as soon as he told her, she said, it's probably not your kid. How could I have not seen this coming? At this point, she thought we were going to get a divorce. So me having a kid was the worst case scenario for her. Right away, she told him to kick me out of the house. The house that I pay for. That's when I grabbed the phone from him and I started telling her everything. First off, I told her that I paid for all the bills and that her son made only $200 a week from a stupid gaming thing and that he wasn't even bothering to look for another job. And then on top of paying for the bills, I still had to cook and clean. And I asked her, do you really think this is the kind of man I want to have a kid with? She had no response. That's when she hung up the phone and told my husband to go over to her house. When I broke the news to her that he didn't pay for any of the bills and that I was paying for the house, she literally lost her shit. My husband hung up the phone and told me that he would never speak to me again. God, if only that were true. Then he goes over to his mom's house and guess what? An hour later, he demands I go over to her house to apologize to his mother. I said that I would, but instead I went over there and told her some more truths. I ended up telling her that her son told me not to tell her that he didn't make any money and that the whole time he and I were together, she thought that he was paying for all the bills. Then I said, aren't you embarrassed that your son is like that? That's when she told me the only way she would accept my child was with a paternity test. How am I supposed to do that with the baby in my belly? Finally, the baby was born and I was able to prove that it was his son. My husband wants us to stay together, but his mom keeps criticizing me. Every time she sees the kid, she says it doesn't look like my husband. Even though I already proved that it was his. I think that I should get a divorce. I'm afraid my mother-in-law might do something to the baby. My husband thinks I'm just overreacting. What should I do? The title is, I told my sons I wish I never gave birth to them. I don't care how many times you come to my door to apologize. I let them and their father bully me for years. Call me all kinds of names. How they reject every present I ever bought them because it wasn't brand new or super expensive. Despite me having to go hungry sometimes to even afford what I could get them. I came to their father's house one day to say happy birthday. They ignore me. I tried to give them a hug. I got pushed away. Their father told me to stop annoying them on their 16th birthday. Quote, for God's sake. I got them both Nintendo Switches for their birthday, and I set my carefully wrapped present on the table, and they opened it last. When they saw it, they said, really? That's it? I looked confused and asked what's wrong. Was it the color this time? Or maybe they expected games too? Quote, no one fucking plays Nintendo, you fucking dinosaur. They said dinosaur. Quote, you guys never texted me. I didn't know what you wanted, and I know you broke the one you shared, so I got you both your own. I told them. They set the presents I had to starve myself for on the table and everyone went inside for the cake. I finally realized they don't care. They really don't care. Why it took me years to realize, I don't know, but I do now. I took the switches and headed for the door. Their dad stopped me and in front of everyone said, quote, Hey, where are you going? You're leaving your kids on their birthday? Let her go. It won't make a difference, one of my boys said. Everyone laughed. Everyone fucking laughed. I started to tear up and my son's aunt told me to, quote, stop being a big baby and hold the phone for pictures. I got angry and I yelled in front of everyone. I hate you. I hate you all. I'm tired of this family abusing me, using my trauma against me, making me feel fucking small because I'm not rich and spoiled. I've done nothing but love this family. But because I'm, quote, built like a child, I can't sit with the adults. No one came to my birthday. Why should I be here? No one cares about me. But y'all won't bat an eye if I fucking died, would you? Then I looked at my boys dead in their eyes and said, I hate you both. I wish I never fucking had you. I then ran out to my car and left. 
I blocked them all. The next day, I heard a knock on my door and saw my kids' father. He begged me to come to his house and talk to our kids. He says they're so sorry, yet I've never heard this come out of their mouth, so I'm not interested. That was three days ago, and ever since, he's come to my door and asked me for, to forgive them, but I won't. I don't think I can. So the title of the original was, I told my sons I wish I never gave birth to them. And then the other side is titled, I hate my mom and how she convinced thousands of people that she's the victim. This is going to be long, but please bear with me. I, 23 female, am no longer in contact with my mom, Jane, because of years of abuse, manipulation, fear-mongering, and hatred. I was conceived through a one-night stand. Jane couldn't get in contact with the guy and so carried and raised me as a single mother until she met someone. And God, did she let me know it. She made sure to tell me how unwanted, unlovable, and disgusting I was. Oh my God. She admitted to neglecting me as an infant and toddler and how she would essentially have screaming matches with me. When I was five, she met William and they fell in love. They got married within a year and William adopted me after his twin sons, John and Oscar, 16 male, were born. I was seven. Their relationship moved very fast and I believed it caused a lot of turmoil. I truly believe the pregnancy was to trap William but that's speculation and opening a whole can of worms. During the pregnancy, Jane would have tantrums about having twins, how she only wanted one and how she would only love the first one that came out. This was a new side to her that William hadn't seen before and he shut it down quickly. Well, she kept her promise and only gave attention to Oscar. John was completely oh. neglected by her other than to feed. She had intense postpartum depression mm. and that's not her fault but what is is how she handled it she refused to get help and claimed ppd slash ppp is for insane what? and bad mothers at some point when the boys were a year or so old she was admitted in the hospital for having intense thoughts about hurting herself or others she was diagnosed with depression, anxiety, and PPP. She spent five months in a hospital slash mental health facility. For those five months she was gone, I've never felt so much love from another person in my life. Bearing in mind, I was just eight. God. All I had known was yelling and emotional abuse. When she got out, both sides of the family had a big sit down and told her their expectations. It was all doable. Go to therapy, take her meds, and they made her a list of emergency contacts who she could call if she was feeling it all a bit too much. She had a support system in place, but she didn't use it. We moved out when William got home and found me at age 11, trying to cook dinner for my brothers, except Jane had turned the gas and electric off as punishment. Jane had locked herself in the bathroom and wouldn't come out because John was upset. Remember, she hates John. Oh. She had also thrown a ton of stock around in a fit of rage because I said she probably shouldn't take Oscar to the shop if she can't walk straight. William packed our stuff up and we left for his mother's. Jane was not happy about that. When he found out she had thrown shit around and at me, he was furious. He filed for divorce the following Monday. The court gave him full custody with mandated visitations from Jane. I remember crying myself to sleep when I found that out. We moved out to Grandma's house and into a nice flat where we seemed to really get our life together. Other than the visitation, we were good until William got a new job and we had to move across the city. This set Jane off, who up until this point had been on mostly good behavior. We moved closer to William's sister and her family. They all knew about Jane. Aunt was on the contact list, but we all tried to move forward. Things were good for a couple of years, but then I turned 16. The day after my 16th, I got a text from Jane telling me that she's moving out and that I need to pack my stuff from my old room. I went, stupidly, and began putting things into piles. Jane just stood in the doorway and eventually began bawling her eyes out. She began apologizing for everything she had done and how she feels like a failure. This is when she told me about the emotional and verbal abuse she inflicted on me as an infant slash toddler and how she blames herself for my numerous mental health issues. This was all leading up to her asking if I could ever forgive her. I said no. I said that she may feel guilty, but she's stuck in this cycle where she's abused the boys as well. She lost her fucking mind and kicked me out. It got a little physical between us and she ended up screaming that I'm no longer her daughter and how she's disowning me. Good. When I got home, I told William everything. He was furious too 
and went to her place and arrived back home hours later with our stuff. I don't know what went down and I don't want to. We filed a police report. I had scrapes and bruises and her mandated visits were lifted. A weight had been lifted off my shoulders. Mm -hmm. It felt like this black cloud of negativity had finally eased up. I felt so much happier. I began to focus on school and my family without dreading having to see her. We couldn't get a restraining order, but she kept her distance. She would send birthday and Christmas cards, but we never reciprocated. The boys know a little bit about what went down, but William was very frugal with what he told them. He said he didn't want to inflict unnecessary emotional damage onto them. Then, on their 16th, she shows up, which was weird because she never shows up to anything. I kept my distance and stayed in the kitchen, but I could still see and hear everything. I was shaking in fear and had to run to the bathroom at one point. She had bought them both Nintendo Switches. They both opened her presents last and both quietly thanked her. There was no insults being thrown around. No one said, let her go. It won't make a difference. The atmosphere was stifling. In fact, it was Jane who yelled and insulted first. She called the twins ungrateful brats. And the second she stood up to yell, William and Auntie began to push her outside. As she was being pushed, she points at the twins and yelled, you're both fucking ungrateful, unlovable little cunts. And my biggest regret is not aborting you when I had the chance. The party was naturally ruined at this point and the boys are both totally emotionally destroyed <sighs> William left at one point to go and talk to her because she had blocked William the only one who has her number but I don't know the specifics it's been a few weeks since the incident and the boys are both destroyed Oscar has become a recluse and John isn't eating I'm furious mm -hmm. I'm sorry for making this so long I'm just so mad traumatized and upset by the whole thing my older sister's boyfriend confessed his feelings to me I 17F, have an older sister, 21F, who I'll call B. B has a boyfriend, 21 meters, who I'll call J. Just like I said in the title, J has confessed that he has feelings for me, and he said that he has had them for a long time. Just to clarify J and B have been together for almost a year, and I've known J because my sister had a huge crush on him, when they were in high school. So I was really happy for her, when she told me they were dating, and since my sister still lives at home with our parents, Jay has been over a lot of times for dinner, or just to hang out with my sister. During our first meeting when B brought him home to meet the family, I didn't try to be overly friendly with him, but I was nice to him. My sister told me later that, he thought that I was a bit too cold to him, and asked me to be nice to him so every other time I saw him, I was nice. I greeted him, talked with him about several topics, which we had in common like anime which we were both very huge fans of, and I thought he was really cool. But that was it. I had no interest in him romantically, and just saw him as my sister's boyfriend. But just yesterday during a Halloween party our family was having with our friends and family, Jay obviously came as my sister's date. I was having a lot of fun, and I remember Jay coming up to me, and asked if I could help him get drinks from the fridge that, our family kept in the garage and I agreed. On the way there, we were talking about our costumes, and how they matched as they were from the same anime. Before we returned to the house, he grabbed my hand and told me he had something to say. He then confessed to me that, he had a crush on me and that he was first hoping that, his feelings for me would go with time, but he felt like every day he came to our house his feelings would grow. He also said that, he can't stop thinking about me. I felt uncomfortable as he spoke, and asked what about my sister, and their relationship, and he said that he loves my sister, but loved me more than her and said that, he was sorry for having feelings for me, when I am still a minor and he is an adult, and that he just felt like he had to let me know. I was quiet, and so was he as he looked at me awaiting my answer. I told him that, I don't have feelings for him, and I think that him confessing to me will ruin the friendly relationship between us, and I told him that I'd tell my sister, because I didn't want her to misunderstand. But he begged me not to tell my sister, because he still wanted to date her, and I told him that he can't date someone, if he doesn't have feelings for them, and ran back to my house to try and find my sister. I found her, and she immediately asked where Jay was. I pulled her aside while telling her that, there was something she had to know, and we went to the bathroom which was fairly quiet, and I told her about what Jay had told me. She looked at me silently for a few seconds, before going outside the bathroom. I followed her and saw her take Jay away, by the hand as they went to her room upstairs. I couldn't focus on the party anymore, and kept looking up to see, if Jay would leave the house, but he didn't leave. Even after the party was beginning to end, they were still up there. I thought maybe it had gone bad, and that Jay had probably hurt my sister, so I told my mom what happened, and we both went to check on her. We found them cuddling on her bed, and immediately she saw me, she told me to get out of her room. I was confused, and asked what I had done. 
She told me that she's always known that, I was jealous of her relationship with Jay, and that she couldn't believe I'd go as far as lying to about Jay confessing to me, and said that Jay was an adult, and I was a child and whatever obsession I had with Jay should end. Then she told my mom a whole other story that, Jay had apparently told her. Apparently, Jay told my sister that, we were talking about anime in the garage while getting more drinks, and I began to confess about how I liked him from the moment I saw him, and that he tried to reject me nicely, but I ran off to be and told her a completely different story, just to make Jay look bad. I tried to defend myself, but for some reason my mother sided with B, and dragged me out of B's room. My mother then told my dad what B had told her, and my father was confused at first, but at least he listened to my side of the story, but my mom didn't believe me. She even called my aunts, who were there and began to tell them, and they were all telling me how wrong, I was for trying to break my sister's relationship apart. B also came down with Jay and escorted Jay out before coming back to tell me that, I have always tried to get everything from her, and she knew one day I'd try to steal her boyfriends, and my mom and aunts shamed me for it. Only my dad believed me. I have been upset about it and both my mom, and sister are ignoring me. I also cried a lot to my dad telling him the story over, and over hoping that he doesn't get lied to by my sister. I sent a text to Jay telling him that, he was a horrible person, and told him how I couldn't believe he lied to my family and he sent a screenshot to my sister, and just a few minutes ago she's yelled at me for still trying to ruin her relationship, and for being obsessed, and jealous of her, and I was crying. I just want to know, what I should do to prove my innocence. It feels so horrible to be accused of such a thing. I'm not talking to anyone in my house, and I've been locked in my room. Update. Someone told me to send my dad the link to my post and I did. I think he showed it to my mom or sent her same link because she came to my room, and said she wanted to talk to me. I refused, because I had tried talking to her many times to prove myself, but she ignored me or refused to hear me out. She then told my dad to try and make us talk, but I refused again and told my dad that, I wanted to go to my grandparents' house, and stay there because I was uncomfortable at home. I also specifically said in front of my mom that, I wanted to go to a place where no one thought, I was trying to steal another person's boyfriend, and my mom tried to defend herself saying that, it was a misunderstanding, and that she was ready to listen to me but I didn't want to talk to her. I think she might have read the comments from my first post calling her a bad mother, and was trying to convince herself that, she was a good parent in that situation when she wasn't. My dad took me to my grandparents house on Tuesday, and they immediately believed my side of the story, when I told them what happened, and while my dad was still in their house, my grandfather told him to ban Jay from coming to her house. My grandmother wanted to confront my mom but I knew my mom would feel bad about it, and probably cry, and even if many people here told me to let my mom get called out by my grandparents, I didn't want that. It would cause more drama with her side of the family, and it would become something big, and maybe they would all end up taking my mom's side which was Jay's side, and I didn't want that. Also my dad discouraged it for the same reason. So I stayed with my grandparents for almost a week and it was nice. My dad would call me regularly to check on me. My mom tried to call me and she sent me a lot of texts asking me to come home, but I didn't want to. I had blocked my sister on everything so I'd, if she tried reaching out but I highly doubt she did. My dad called and told me that, my mom has been crying a lot and begging him to get me to come back, and my grandmother also told me to go back for her sake so I had to. My grandparents took me back home after school, and my mom started to act all nice, and sweet to me and was trying to do everything for me, and asking for a girl's day out with just me, and her but I refused. Before I wouldn't question this, because she's usually nice to me, but after what happened, and her siding with my sister plus accusing me for trying to ruin my sister's relationship, I wasn't ready to be friendly with her. I also couldn't see her the same after embarrassing and shaming me with her sisters. I think it was around 6 or 7 pm, and I was in my room, and B came knocking on my door, and asked if they can come in. I went to check who else was there, and I saw it was Jay. I refused and tried to close my door, but they blocked it. My sister kept saying that, they were trying to fix things but I didn't want to listen, and kept pushing my door to close it, but they were also pushing to open it and actually ended up opening it. I told them to leave my room, and I was shouting for my dad to come up to my room, but my sister closed the door with her, and Jay inside and like leaned against it while telling me to calm down, and hear them out. I refused and kept telling them to leave, and tried to push my sister out to leave but Jay tried to pull me back, and I shouted at him not to touch me. My sister started crying and told me to stop acting this way and to just hear them out. My dad also came, 
and was knocking for the door to be opened, and I said I would only listen to her, if she lets my dad stay with me in the room, but she said that they both wanted to talk to only me, and opened the door to tell my dad and my mom who was also there about it, and of course my mom made my dad leave me with these people just, because B was crying, and she never cries unless it's serious and that kind of BS. So I called my dad and remained on the line with him, and told him to listen just in case they tried to do something, and my sister was fine with it. I also told them to stay next to the door away from me, and then my sister started saying that, Jay was really worried when I wasn't at home, and she also became worried, because this wasn't me and then Jay said that, he felt guilty for being the cause of our family having issues, and then said that he decided to forgive me for trying to break him, and my sister up in that, he hoped everything could go back to the way, they were before the party. My sister then started apologizing for saying mean stuff to me, and said that no matter what she will always love me, and that she wanted us to be close again. She also said that it was fine for me to like Jay, but I shouldn't try to break them up, because they were very happy together, and that I would understand if I found someone that, I loved like she loved Jay isn't that ridiculous? I even find it a bit funny. I asked my dad if he heard, what they said, and he scoffed but my sister started saying that, she understood that I was upset now which is why they got me something, but it was in her room. Jay then said that it was very expensive, but he got it for me because he knew I really wanted it, and said how excited he had been to give it to me. My sister then asked if she could give me a hug for making up, and then she said that, we should go together with my mom for a girl's day out to make up, and I told her and her boyfriend to get out of my room. Jay then said that they were just trying to make up with me, and that they both missed hanging out with me and I told him to shut up, and never talk to me again. I then told my sister that, as long as she thought I liked Jay and as long as, she believed Jay's side of the story over mine. I didn't want her to talk to me, and I didn't want her in my room too, and that they should leave. B got mad and shouted at me saying that I was being mean, and that despite the fact that, I was trying to break them apart, she still wanted to be the bigger person, and make up with me. My mom then came to the room, I think she was listening with my dad or standing outside my door, and said that we should all get along and the fight should end, because we were all acting childish because of it. Jay was acting all innocent the whole time nodding, and agreeing with everything. I still don't understand why they're trying to make everything seem like it was, before after publicly humiliating me in front of the family for telling them the truth about Jay. Let's make Christmas happen for 10 families this year. But first, story time. In 2017, I was having an extremely hard year. Uh, Bubba was in kindergarten and I was working in my kids' school cafeteria. I was also working a second job, so I was actually working two almost full-time jobs. But it absolutely did not matter how much I was working. Christmas was not going to happen that year. If I remember correctly, I told the kids some story about like Santa didn't have enough elves to make a bunch of toys, so they were only going to get like one or two gifts each. Well, Bubba, with his talk he talks a lot, went and told his teachers that, um, and they put two and two together, and they came and visited me in the school cafeteria while I was at work. So, Miss Crystal and uh, Miss Wilson, they were able to sponsor us for Christmas, um, and all four of my children um, had a very blessed Christmas that year because of them. Y'all, I get so damn emotional every time I think about that story. In the years since that has happened, I have repaid that gift to other families um, in small ways. But this year, um, I said, why not do it in a big way? And I actually started planning this back in May. I feel like with such a large platform that I have that um, it would be absolutely pointless of me to not use it for some kind of good. So let me get into the details of this and how y'all can help. I got with the counselor at my children's school and I said, what do you think about putting together an Amazon wish list? Um, and I'll promote it on my TikTok. Um, and let's see if we can get Christmas for 10 families in need uh, within the school district. And she was as excited about it as I was and immediately got started on the Amazon wish list, which is now complete. Her and I have both been um, working on it for the past month and it's ready to go. The Amazon wish list is in my bio. And because I said that, TikTok will block it. So I'm asking y'all that you please share, repost this, whatever you can to get the word out. If you cannot contribute by buying a gift, sharing it is the gift that you can give us that can help. And it would be really cool if we could find some bigger creators to maybe stitch this or repost it. That would be really cool too. So I'm going to post updates throughout the month of November to let y'all know how it's going. Um, and I'm going to try and do my first update on Saturday. That depends on how it goes. Today is Tuesday. Um, so that's four days away. So I'm going to do my first update on it on Saturday. Um, if not Saturday, I'll do it next Monday. 
my girlfriend and I, both 19, were walking around when we came across this girl around our age and a little boy who looked like maybe one. She had him wrapped tightly in her arms, but her eyes were closed and she was on the bench, almost like she was asleep. He was quiet but wide awake. They were both shivering. It was under five degrees, sort of raining, very windy, typical nasty Canadian weather. And while the kid was covered nicely, the girl was wearing a thin t-shirt and ripped jeans, obviously not for the weather. My girlfriend and I didn't think much of it, but then I caught the little boy's eyes and I don't know. I just felt like I had to make sure everything was okay. I told my girlfriend that I was going to ask her if she was okay. She was understandably reluctant, but agreed. I walked up to the girl, asked her if she was okay. Eventually, she told us that her parents kicked her and her son out, but she was fine. Just waiting for her boyfriend, but he's going to be an hour. I said okay and then offered my hoodie. I noticed that my girlfriend made a face, but I really didn't mean anything by it. She looked like she was close to freezing. And I gave her my plastic water bottle that I hadn't opened yet. She was really so thankful and she even made her son say thank you to us. We then left and my girlfriend wouldn't talk or say anything to me. I asked her what was wrong and she said, Why don't you go ask little Miss Pity Princess? I just went, Whoa, this is about the girl we just saw? She said, Duh, and said that I was doing too much. She said that I've never given her my hoodie before, but it's like, Yeah, because you've never been cold and always had a jacket on. It's not like she doesn't have a bunch of my clothes in her closet. She just called me a major a hole and said that she'll talk to me later if I apologize and promise to never do that again. I just don't know. My mom was a teen mom who got kicked out and I guess I just didn't think it would be that big of a deal. I still don't think I did anything wrong. My sister told me that I did a bit much, especially since the girl's boyfriend was coming. I can be a bit clueless, especially regarding girls, so am I in the wrong here? So I was supposed to meet my brother and his new girlfriend for lunch today. Guess who were the only two that showed up? Me and her. He texts me this morning and is all like, hey Ryan, meet me for lunch today. I want you to meet this girl. I really like her. I'm like, where at? He's like, Applebee's. I'm like, no. He's like, teach you at Friday. So I was like, sure, are you buying? I arrive on time, sit down in a booth, call him. Where you at, bro? Oh, sorry, can't make it. She's there though. She's about to walk in. What? Almost felt set up. I'm supposed to have a conversation with someone I've never met about dating my brother. No thanks. She sits down, we're shooting the shit, just having normal conversations, and she starts asking me a lot of questions about him, and I'm like, what do you want to know, baby? <laughs> Out of nowhere, she comes up with, does he talk to other girls? And I rebuttal with a question, because I took debate in high school. And I said, when did you start talking to him? And she goes, well, we met on Sunday, but we've been talking for like a week and a half, and we're really into each other. So I was like, you have nothing to worry about. That's such a relief. Who did you vote for? I'm like, come again? Strange question to ask someone you just met, but obviously I responded and was like, oh, Pedro from Napoleon Dynamite. Anyway, she didn't get it, but she also claimed she was vegan and we split mozzarella sticks. Pretty sure you're not allowed to do that. Paid for both our meals like the gentleman I am. My brother said he'd demo me and I was like, bro, throwing an extra 20 for making me go through that strange ass encounter. Oh, like, shut up. She's a nice girl. I'm like, yeah, but why did I have to go on a first date with her so she could gain information about you? Also, I really hope she doesn't see this. Happy Tuesday, y'all. I turned 21 a few months ago, and you're probably like, Sasha, you look like a fucking infant, bitch. Because I'm trans and I perpetually look like a fucking 12-year-old. But this is a message for, like, young-looking trans people. Like, when you turn 21, you are not just gonna be able to go somewhere and be like, this is my legal state fucking ID, and have them be like, you're all good, bud. No, people are assholes. Like, in the past few months, I feel like I've had so many encounters that are related to me looking young. Like, one time I was in a bar, and I finished my drink, so I walked back up to the bar to order another one. And so as I'm waiting for my drink, there's, like, a cop sitting next to me, and there's, like, a song playing on the fucking radio that some like early 2000s hit and this cop is like standing there literally doing like the cop pose like with like a spiky haircut and i'm standing there and he goes hey you know this song uh why are you talking to me at this bar are you trying to fuck right now and i was like i can't think of that i can't think of the name of it but definitely recognize it and this fucking douchebag looks at me and goes of course you don't know this song of course you don't know because because what, 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 what are you 18 what are you fucking 18 what are you, fucking 16? What are you, fucking 13 years old standing at the bar right here? Of course you don't fucking know the song. This man was having a fucking stroke over me looking young. What are you, 18? This is not to catch a predator. You can stop fucking asking that. And I was like, I'm 21. And he stood there in his stupid ass pose with his spiky cop haircut being like, <sighs> all right, yeah. And he was actually such a fucking asshole that I got my drinks for free that night because the bartender was literally aware that I was being harassed. What are you, fucking 18? Your wife fucking hates you. I bet your children fucking hate you too. And if you put any more gel in your spiked up little haircut, it would literally fall off into a singular hard brick of hair. My wife and I are both middle school math teachers, though we work for different districts. I feel we're incredibly blessed to have jobs that we enjoy and able to make a difference in kids' lives. We don't own cars. We have more than enough money and we have each other. My wife is far more burnt out and admittedly her district is more challenging. Since COVID times, a very generous, anonymous celebrity 
We all know who it is, but they want to remain anonymous, so I won't say here. Has donated five vacations to help with teacher burnout to teachers in my district. The past two years, it was like a five-day stay in a remotish cabin, more in line with pandemic times. This year, they upped it to a seven-day trip to Hawaii for teacher and family. Well, after the nomination and interview process, I won one of the trips. Nothing like this has ever happened to me, to be quite honest, and I'm not comfortable with winning. I only did the process because it helped me prepare for my stuff for my performance evaluation. Before the end of day Friday, I decided to give the trip to a fellow teacher whose husband just left her. She volunteers to have our most challenging students in her class, and she may actually leave the field because of the burnout. Our community would be worse if she was not a teacher. She was beyond ecstatic after we went over the rules and found out that the trips could be transferred. She accepted and is now going to take her two college-age kids. I told my wife on Friday night, thinking this would be in line with our ethos of living simply and generously. She's furious with me, and she's not a person prone to anger easily, and she's the most mad I've seen her since we met. She says she's as burnt out as any other teacher in our region and needed the trip or she's going to have a breakdown. I asked her if she wanted me to ask for the trip back. She said, of course I can't do that, but our usual winter vacation to one of our family's houses is going to remind her over and over what a selfish asshole you can be so I better do something. When she hasn't been ignoring me, we've been fighting all weekend. So am I in the wrong for giving my free trip to Hawaii to someone who I felt deserved it more and is less fortunate without asking my wife first?